Welcome to the Old Sun Podcast. This is Dale Brisby, Donnie Ray Daytona, and we got the new guy, Gabriel. Gabriel, how do you say your last name? Briseño. 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 Am I saying that right? Say it again. Briseño. 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 Gabriel Briseño. You forgot the middle name, Jesus. Gabriel Jesus Briseño. Um... How have you enjoyed your reflex denim? Great. The oh coffee, my gosh. Man. I, I mean, I, I, I stretch with him, I sleep with him, and I work out with him now. This guy I had gotta... the hardest time getting on Boone. <laughs> yeah, that was that, that was a struggle. So you were on the struggle <laughs> yes. bus. I even, I even offered Donnie one of my pairs of Wranglers. I, was like, I, can't, I, can't, I can't open my legs. <laughs> so we put him in some reflex. Now he's ready to ride bulls, punch bulls, get on Boone, apparently work out in them. Um. Thank you, Rock and Roll Denim, for supporting the All Sun podcast and putting some jeans on our man, Gabriel Jesus Briseño. Rodeo time. Got to get her on down the road. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Rodeo time podcast, All <laughs> Sun <laughs> podcast. <laughs> um, we've got with us today, Gabriel. He's the new guy. The new guy. How long have you been here now? Today's Tuesday. Tomorrow Tuesday. will be a week. Tomorrow will be a week. Yes, Today's sir. day seven. Ooh. Dang. Interesting. So, made it a, almost made it a whole week so far. Go ahead. Tell us how your first week was. What do uh, you think? It was brutal. Dale worked me to the bones. I oh, yeah. Just no no sleep. Endless. Endless rest. <clears throat> <Yesterday> <laughs> just kidding. Yesterday was a long day. Yeah. yeah yesterday was good. No, it's, 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 been, it's been great. Uh, so far, I've, I've, I've learned already a lot. You know, just just with one week, it's 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 felt endless. This week, this week has almost felt like a month, which I I really enjoy. You know, uh, it's been fun. I got on a bull. That was Tommy had a how to ride a horse. Uh, it's Tommy had to fold properly and and box some <laughs> tape some boxes up. You uh you showed up right in the middle of our uh, Black Friday sale, so that was interesting that you. I mean, you got through right in the thick of the warehouse madness. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So, which we're literally, when you guys listen to this, it'll be Thanksgiving, and we'll have like four days left on our Black Friday sale. Monday, <clears throat> Cyber Monday, it ends 20% off, and uh, text me for an additional code. Text special offer to 940-353-0890. End of plug. Um, what, uh, has there been any surprises for you? Uh... So far, no, truly. Yeah. I mean, well, yes and no. You know, yeah. what about how Dale treats you? Uh, you want the truth or you want to lie? <laughs> Whatever you want. <laughs> no, the no, I, to know. Uh, I, I absolutely uh, admire you and, and respect you. Oh, uh, no homo. Uh, but the 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 way the way you. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head? This guy's just trying to get ahead. And, uh, <laughs> Well, it's working. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> um. <coughs> Suck up. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, truth, truthfully, man, I, 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 I've, I've been pretty, pretty thankful. You know, like I, I said, like you, you treat everybody well here. You know, you treat your employees well here. You're a humble guy, just as you are. You know, in your video. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. What about bull riding? Did you expect to get on a bull your first day? Uh. Yeah, true. I thought, you know, I figured it was either that or y'all were going to tase me or some some sort of initiation, you know, get me with those one of those bull zappers. Oh, we haven't initiated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd like to take it easy. <laughs> right uh, no, no, no. I, I I didn't expect the first day. I did expect expect it, um, but not the first day. I think it was it was pretty cool that I did the first day, though. So just to be clear, as far as the uh, tasers, mm -hmm. like, most of what he's referring to is like a hot shot which is a very light buzz. Mm -hmm. There was one incident with an actual taser where Leroy tased Donnie. Um, but that Donnie wanted that to happen. We should have said that in the video. Like, you had the, been the, wanting disclosure. to get yeah. Like, yeah, dude, yeah disclaimer. <laughs> All, yeah. Everything you see here is a reenactment. Do not try this at home. All parties yeah. involved are uh, willing and able to get tased. <laughs> uh, All high-speed chases were done on a closed course. <laughs> <laughs> even, the, even the hot shots. Like, when we hot shot Donnie, Donnie usually asked for it. I mean, not like... 
in a metaphorical sense, but literally like, hey, I want to see how it feels to hot sh- get hot shotted on the tongue. Yeah. Did you see that video? Yes, sir, I did. And then <clears throat> the one, though, that everybody, the one that's got like 800,000 views on YouTube and 3 million views on Facebook is when Wes gets chased yeah. down. But what you didn't see is he hot shotted JB mm-hmm. randomly out of the blue, yeah. unsolicited, yeah. and started a fight. And then JB ended it. Yes, sir. And then I I did maybe instigate. I, I went in and roped Wes mm-hmm. so that he couldn't get <laughs> yeah, away. Yeah. <laughs> so that was probably a little much. Needless to say, we don't just randomly yeah. hot shot people for no reason. That's not <laughs> yeah, really yeah. in our DNA. The other thing we don't do is just, um, for lack of better words, nut check people. Yeah. Um, Especially if we don't know them. Yeah, we don't yeah, do that yeah. to people we don't know. Occasionally, JB will do it to me. Mm-hmm. I'll try to get him back. We did. I did do that to Wes once, unsolicited, a couple of times, actually. But for the most part, we don't really touch each other. <laughs> 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 Unless there's like, I don't know. Occasionally, I got to help Donnie get off a bowl. Yeah, it's been a while. That was a tackle. Yeah. But... um. Yeah, interns don't really get. We don't haze too much. Too much. <laughs> unless, these, unless you're trying to these scare hands away. don't haze. But um, what about the culture in Texas compared to Whittier, um, California? Man, it's it's. I mean, it's a big difference. I mean, Whitt- Whittier's friendly, but y'all are just really, just really family. You know. Uh, everybody it just it seems like everybody just gets along real nice here you know there's there's not not saying there's not a bad person but it seems like there's not a bad person you know and there's not a person that that thinks he's better than the other you know um that's what i see here it's 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 really really humbling being here you know and just just seeing the way y'all interact with folks and and even these folks that you know like see me and treat me you know i i came in here kind of not expecting a little, you would say, backlash because I'm from California, you know, and obviously everybody's like, "Don't California, my Texas." Uh, so you know, I did, I didn't want to portray that in a sense, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I just wanted to be a place where I know I could really appreciate, you know, yeah. and that's that's what you guys have showed me so far, you know. Yeah. Well, I don't want to. I mean, I'm definitely not one to tell somebody what to do. Um, it's a little different sometimes when, you know, you got to be careful about. When you kind of bring somebody into your house. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Literally and figuratively. But I don't know. I want to say maybe like innocent until proven guilty <clears throat> kind of thing. I don't know. I'm lost. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm talking about. about when somebody new comes in. Like you're from Missouri. Yeah. The other, uh, the probationary intern, Joe, yeah. is from North Carolina. Yeah, Missouri is pretty much the Texas of yeah. the Midwest, you know. California, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, what's his. Nuts was from Tennessee. Uh, West was from Tennessee. Yeah. Nick was well. He's from Texas. Um, what was the other one? Ke- Garrett Kelly Johnson was from Nebraska. Mm. Um, That's pretty much Canada. Yeah. <clears throat> Dean Deanie Weenie String Bikini was from Nevada or Utah. Utah, I believe. Utah. So they people come from all over yeah, yes. to spend time here, yeah. which is great. And so I don't really try to have any sort of like preconceived like judgments towards anybody, you know. But most of the time when people show up, they're like, they kind of respect the fact that there may be subtle differences. Of course, yeah. But if they're a follower of mine, like yourself, and a fan of what we do, then you've probably got a pretty good idea of like how we live our lives. Absolutely. Yeah, so, absolutely. Anyhow. Yeah, I mean. You compare Whittier to, to Los Angeles or Hollywood. That's a that's a different ball game, though. You know. How far is it again? It's about uh, like it can be from nineteen to like twenty seven miles away from Whittier. Um, which obviously in in California traffic, that's about an hour, hour and a half. Man, <laughs> not in Winnebago. No, no sir. Um, but LA LA folks are are just characters. They're they're just really indescribable. You know, you just rude, egotistic maniacs. They're just. They're, they're hot-headed. They think they're above everybody, you know. And yeah. Treat every, just degrade a lot of people. So, but. Um, <clears throat> so the bar you worked at, what was it called? Employees only. And you were the bar, like a manager. manager? Yes, sir. Okay. How long did you work there? Uh, we've been open for about three years, so I've been there since uh, day one. 
like when they were still building the place. Wow. Yeah, uh, I started there at the bottom as a buster. Uh, I was bartending at a, another New York style bar in Chinatown, LA. Um, so I was bartending there, one of the head bartenders, not head bartenders, but I was one of the bartenders there, and then a buster at this new location. Uh, and just just as a normal job, you work so your they way serve up. food too. Yes, sir. Yeah, so it's it's a it's considered a restaurant lounge, ah. but employees only is known for the bar. Uh, in I believe in 2011 and 12, it won world's best bar, the New York location. In New York, it's been there for about uh, 16 or 17 years. Wow. Yes, sir. Interesting. Yeah. So they held y'all to a pretty high standard. Yes, sir. Yeah. As far as like. The, yeah. Dang. Um. So what do you love most about that job? What kept you there for three uh, years? Well, I got I enjoyed this industry for because of interacting with folks, you know, um, people hearing stories and and just your regulars and actually like communicating with people. Um, that's always been a big part of of me, who I am. Uh, I enjoy to talk and I enjoy to meet people and 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 hear stories, like I said. Um, and then, you know, there's different styles of bartending, and I enjoy it because I do a craft as like a, a chef in the kitchen, um, and I feel like I do that with my my cocktails. You know, actually interacting with people, figuring out what they like. If you know, even if it's just a simple vodka soda, to adding just a little bit of pedazzle to it you know um but also creating something that gets them going gets them talking you know what i mean and, and it just it's, it's really humbling to to them becoming your regulars and them actually appreciating you and them coming just for you yourself you know uh, i think that's what that's what's always kept me in this this industry is, is folks like that you know have you ever been in like a kind of i'm just i'm trying to think of like bars in in uh like college towns here in texas like dive bars like well like just like a cowboy kind of bar no like, honky tonks i've I've been in like like the chicken yeah like the chicken but yeah yeah or or even just i mean like like hurricane harry's was a dance hall but like um i'm trying to think of something that's a little more like low-key than billy bob's like i feel like right billy bob's it's kind of got that feel to it but it's just <laughs> really, without the dance floor. yeah Something yeah. like Billy Bob's, but just in like a Weatherford area. Yeah, a smaller setting. Um, there was Weatherford's got a good one, Railhead Smokehouse. But anyway, have you ever been? I guess what what what's the closest you've been in that situation? Uh, a bar called Honeycut. It closed down. Uh, it's in downtown LA on Ninth and Flower, if I'm not mistaken. Real underground. You used to enter through the alleyway. I'm real sketchy. Uh, it was a two bar. <laughs> it was a two bar venue. One bar was more like loungy cocktails, and the other bar was like super kind of divey. The floor lit up. It was like a big old disco disco scene. Bunch of disco balls in the, the roof, and like I said, and then the the floor was lit up. So it was super cool. Um, Doesn't really sound like what I'm. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but I mean, it, yeah, I, I guess not. But that, that's one of those bars where you're just slanging like vodka soda shots and beers. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, well, I, I was thinking because y'all said like dance floors, like this, this is where people dance in the the light of floor. So yeah, but no, well, no nothing, ver like, nothing, no, no, sir. more like two step. No, yeah, sir, like no. hardwood. Yeah. No, um, just a lot of <clears throat> bumping and grinding, and there might be like splits. A, uh, still fun. Yeah, still fun. <laughs> yeah. A disco saddle hanging yeah. from this. <laughs> you ever seen those? <laughs> no, like a it's a like a disco ball that's covered in rhinestones and it spins. Just a regular disco ball, but what it's a saddle. saddle. It looks like a saddle. Oh, no, I've not seen one. <laughs> yeah. Sounds very interesting. Yeah. I don't um, We spent, I guess, kind of like a pool hall. Okay. Yeah. Might no. be the vibe. But anyway. That's where I like to hang out. Something like that. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in the Dixie Chicken in College Station. We'll have to take you there one day. Anyhow, that's if, if I'm going to be in a bar, it's like that. A little Is more lit up, uh, serve burgers, and. I don't really drink. They got a, uh, I don't drink, not really. <laughs> kind of is not the right term. I do not drink. Um, <laughs> they got a rattlesnake in the corner in a big Is it live? Is it alive or dead? It's a terrarium. Oh, he's alive. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Shoot. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. What's his name? Do you remember? I can't remember. You've been in there one time. One I'm time. the one that should remember. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't the roof get blown off of it this past Something happened. Year? I ain't been there in a minute. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, the Dixie Chicken was my spot, mm. and then there was uh, <clears throat> a few dance halls I'd go to. But uh, one of these days, I'm going to open up my own bar. It's Rodeo Blues. Mm -hmm. All right now, I've got a private bar venue version of it that um, is only <laughs> open occasionally, uh, and, and, and there's not currently alcohol or drinks of any kind. But <laughs> one day, yes, one sir. day. We need to take you to Fort Worth. 
yep. it's downtown. Yeah. A lot of bars there. Pretty right. much all of them are what I'm trying to describe. <laughs> yeah, we were at um, PRs the weekend before last, maybe. Yeah. You and Joe? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, well, that, we'll that's probably what... go during the NFR. Okay. You Sweet. excited about that? Yes. Yes, I am. I've, I've yeah. never been to a rodeo or anything like that. Close, closest thing was was in Vegas during the PBR, and it was my brother's bachelor party. Gotcha. We just it just happened to be in the same time. And but, but you didn't. I didn't know. I didn't. I just. I just. I just. Just a bunch of cowboys, a bunch of a bunch of people dancing, and, and it, was, it was pretty fun. That'd be the one to go to. Yeah. The, the NFR for your first one. You, you know. think? <laughs> <laughs> go big or go home. <laughs> Overkill. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like killing a fourteen point buck when you're thirteen years old. I think. I think you got to enjoy the little ones too, though. Like. Yeah, like I think those little ones are, you gotta you gotta feel it there too. Those, mm. those are cool. Yeah, being behind the shoots at like a little Amy rodeo where there's like just down home kind of people. That's a whole nother feeling. But uh, speaking of, Donnie's going to uh, Thanksgiving rodeo school. Is it official? You're going? Yeah. You're in. Yeah. All right. I text Wes. So. He's expecting you. Yeah, I'll be there. Don't let us down. How many are you gonna get on? I don't know. Like, Not really. You don't have any any uh, plans? Just, yeah, no. Thanksgiving Everybody. rodeo school is at uh, Stay Smith's Ranch. Okay. And they've had it for like <clears throat> maybe fifteen years now, twelve years, it's something a long like that. Time. But uh, they'll buck some colts. They'll buck some of his old stuff, and uh, usually Wes. Stevenson, Tom McFarland, Tilden Hooper are the main bareback riding instructors. Stephen Anding used to go. Um, now it's uh, in the bronc riding. Bradley Harder, Joey Saunier, uh, Heath DeMoss would usually go, Jacob Sterling. Anyhow, it'll be good for you. They yeah. would buck bulls occasionally, but they, they don't really do that much anymore. So. How do you feel about your bronc riding? Eh. I've been, I mean, I feel good about it, but I've, it's it's been better at times. I feel like yeah. I don't feel like I'm riding very good right now. You're getting on better horses. Though. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. I mean, you, we wore out that yeah. brisket. Yeah, I know. That's I was good. looking at some of those trips, and I was like, oh, no wonder I was riding. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like compared to like what I've been getting on now. You've been on about forty. I think I don't know thirty five to forty. I yeah. think bronc riding is different than bull riding, Gabriel. It um, you get on thirty or forty bulls like what you got on, mm. and the kind of bull you got on. If you yourself got on thirty or forty of those, I mean, like you'd have the hang of it, no problem. Yes, sir. But bronc riding, it just takes a lot more time to learn. If you're not in rhythm, then you're not riding. If you're not doing anyway, a lot a lot tougher to learn. Donnie is ahead of his time, you know, in what he's gotten done mm-hmm. in thirty or forty horses. It usually takes guys eighty or ninety, uh, oh, wow. but you can't tell him that. So I'll make sure not to. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't want to hear it. I mean, like you know, like each every athlete wants to be further along than where they are. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, back to Gabriel. Uh, tell us about your upbringing. Like, what is – okay, before you tell us about that, you're a bartender in L.A. What is it that made you want to be an intern in Texas for Dale Brisby? Oh, I think I think it goes back uh, when I was when I was real young, around like nine, nine years old or ten, if I'm not mistaken. Um, go, growing up, going to Yosemite National Park, I think that's where it all started, where I knew I didn't want to grow up in the city. Uh, I've always loved just being outside in forest and, and, and country um, and just always going to Yosemite every, every year, like I said, since I can remember. Uh, always seeing like uh, the horseback uh, rangers has always caught my eye. I've always wanted, like I said, just live in the, the goal. The end game when I was younger was to be in Yosemite, buy, build a house there, be a ranger or be somewhere where I can just have land and horses. You can build in Yosemite? No, you can't. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I, I just thought when I was yeah, younger, you know, yeah. like and my, my folks, of course, were like, yeah, go for it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can do anything you want. Um, and I think that that's what it was, you know. You just, just always, always enjoyed, you know, outside instead of being city-wise, you know. But I've always just worked in the city where, you know, that kind of set me back where I didn't – I kind of lost sight of that in a sense. Um 
and not till to be honest till i saw your videos uh about a few years back where i was just like that's right like this this is like you know it just got my heart pumping again or it's like this is this is i remember this is what i love and you know i i enjoy you know just being outdoors and um i think that that's what it was uh just just that remembrance of you know as a child just wanting that um and then seeing that you actually hire and you 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 kind of teach interns you know uh i was like i wanted to take that chance where i know you said you you know you want interns that don't have experience in a sense you know and i i know that as as you say as a person of, of management to sculpting the person the way you want it you know you want them to be uh so you know i thought i'd, I'd give it a try you know and yeah. then be be something that i can i can hopefully w we'll see what happens in the future you know uh, uh so so i don't know I, I, I hope that's you know yeah no there's no wrong answer yeah. do you have a question no question no um i don't know i can't imagine what it's like like live in los angeles california i don't know and so i i'm sure they can't imagine what it's like to live yeah here and do the things that we do what um what is it so on a scale of one to ten well how much of it is just you being interested in the outdoors rather than you being interested specifically in like being horseback and agriculture and the cow calf industry no wrong answer well i think i curious. And, and truth be told, uh, my my end game is is to have my be a prime investor in the bar industry, uh, or I don't have to be there and own that piece of land or property, but still be in that that cowboy culture where I want to be horseback, obviously as as much as you can, as 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 the weather will allow you to, um, and the horses will, um, and also like you know own a few few cattle and stuff like that. I, I would love that like more than anything, you know. Um, so that's like. Like you mentioned to me, I know you said that this industry is, is pretty tough on, on, on family and lifestyle and, and, and income. So if, if I know I can have a, a certain wealthy income and still live this life that I know I can and cherish, you know, um, that that would be just 100%, you know? Yeah. So I think definitely what you have going is, is, is my end game. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like the, your lifestyle would be something that I can see and that's what I want. Right. You know, with just a little more income and, you yeah. know. I understand. No, I think <clears throat> listening to you talk since you you know you and I have had this conversation two or three times by now. It's I feel like you've got a very realistic mindset on what you want and what it'll take to get it. Yes, sir. I don't think there's anything wrong with somebody wanting to make a living ranching, mm -hmm. but it's some people have an unrealistic expectation of how it happens, and you can't just be a ranch hand your whole life and then all of a sudden at age 42 you make this switch now you own a 10,000 acre ranch mm -hmm. with you know i don't know however many thousand cows mm -hmm. and that's how you support your family you know it's <clears throat> what you're saying I, i'm not saying somebody shouldn't strive to do that but you can't day work your way to that yeah you know you can't have <clears throat> you can't <clears throat> make $125 a day and then all of a sudden just one day you pop unless you've got an inheritance unless you win the lottery unless you've got something yeah. so if you've got another like main you know hustle in mind that like helps you achieve this goal on the side then all of a sudden yeah you're yeah. 45 50 years old and you might be able to buy yourself a nice piece of land that affords you a few horses and a few cows enough to where you can do both lifestyles, you know, comfortably. Absolutely. Um, anyhow, like I said, it, it's neither one of them is unattainable. It's just that you got to be realistic about how you're going to get there, mm -hmm. you know, yes, sir. because at the end of the day, a cow can't make a payment on herself and the land. So when you and and that that that's just getting down to like actual facts. Like mm -hmm. you 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 can't buy a thousand acres in Texas, and let's say you're getting, you know, <clears throat> a cow every twenty five acres. Mm -hmm. So that's forty cows. So you're gonna put forty cows on a thousand acres. So if you got to borrow the money for the thousand acres and borrow the money for the cows, the cows can't make the payment on themselves and the land mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying yeah 
So, um, and you know, it always depends on like where you buy the acreage and what kind of cows you buy. So it's like, well, if you get cheaper cows, they're going to bring, there's all this math involved mm -hmm. that is, is like, it's actual math that has to be done. Yeah. And so, um, I'm not pessimistic about anybody's goals. I'm just, I just want people to be realistic about how they're going to accomplish them. Of course. You know, because there's, there's a lot of ways to get there, but what I like is like, okay, if you have this, this money machine over here, that's going to help you accomplish this goal by, let's say 20 years from now, man. Okay. Now you're talking. Yeah. Yeah. Like this money machine buys this land that, that, and then, then yeah, maybe borrow the money for the cows, mm -hmm. but the cows just make the cow payment. And that's all they got to do. Yeah. Then there's not as much pressure on them. Yeah. And even if it's a thousand acres, or if you if you don't want to work that hard, you know, maybe it's a hundred acres, mm -hmm. and you just get, you know, you get a few cows, and you get ten cows, and you have to feed them a little bit because it's not enough acres to, depending on where you're at, if you're mm -hmm. out where we are, you can go to East Texas. Of course, the land is going to cost a little more. It won't take as many acres per cow. Um, anyhow, there's all kinds of factors to consider, but all of it's attainable. It just takes a certain level level of work ethic mm -hmm. to get there. But just like the bar, those people who built the bar, you mm -hmm. know, on day one, they knew what it was going to take. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> especially when, when you're not in a hurry. If you're willing to be patient, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. If you're patient, you got a good attitude, and you put the work ethic behind it. Yes, sir. Same yeah. thing with bronc ride. Yeah. You know, patient, good attitude, work ethic. Absolutely. Then it's just... Absolutely set your goals and go get them but <clears throat> no i like i think it's a great story and the thing about the, the the thing that was most attractive about bringing you here um you know i liked the tone in your video since your first video but you sent four total and i remembered each yeah. one of them and the timing of each one just there were a few where it got really competitive and then this fourth one i was like all right guys we need somebody to work in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. And you sent one just as quick as you had sent the other three. And uh, and I was like, all right, this is our guy. Like, as soon as you sent yeah. it and I watched it, I was like, this is our guy. This is this. And I knew and I knew who you were when I watched the fourth I one. I appreciate that, yeah. And uh, it just, it didn't, the fact that you were going to have to do some work that wasn't like, because everybody thinks it's just riding mm -hmm. Boone every day yeah. and you're, you're, you're roping cows by week two and you're just out on the ranch. Absolutely. And, even the biggest ranches in Texas, you know, they're not they're not branding calves, but one month a year. Yeah. You know, they're weaning another month. Yeah. Sure, they're gonna be riding colts in between, but like that most romantic work that people like strive and want to do, like even the biggest ranches aren't doing mm -hmm. that year round. So you're definitely not gonna be doing yeah. that on yeah. on Radiator Ranch every day. Anyhow, um, so that's why I was excited. And not to mention, you know, your tone, we could tell that you were going to be a humble guy, nice, easy to get along with. So, but. Well, thank you. Maybe the most <laughs> intriguing thing about Gabriel, let's talk about how you got here. Like, like actually on the back of a motorcycle yes, in November. Describe that for us. Cold and scary. Cold and scary. Donnie, what was it that took you a couple of days to realize what he was talking about? He kept saying the roads were dark. And I was like, <laughs> what the heck you mean the roads are dark? Like, I mean, yeah, obviously it was nighttime, but I was like, don't you have a headlight? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. But, but what was he really I guess he was, like, he was talking because there weren't no street lights. I guess, like... Right, that's or exactly, just the slots exactly. from the city and Glow stuff. from the city. I was yeah, like, that's exactly what it, it was. It took me a real while. Well, I was like, this dude's never been out of Los Angeles. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know. At least not yeah, on the yeah, dirt yeah. bike. Yeah. No, no. no, man. I mean, you, you can just, no, right away, seeing the stars, like, yep, this this definitely is no lights, no nothing, no smog, nothing, you know. So. I can't imagine coming through West Texas, like going down I-20 on a motorcycle in November, 11 p.m. at night, it was hard. and like, was, was the was the moon out? The the oh shoot, I don't even know. All I know is I was just looking at the stars just to, just yeah. to give me some <laughs> some confidence. Those uh, the last the last few hours after I so I I got chased by two dogs. 
Um, I clipped a deer, my left peg. Almost, I don't know if I broke its leg. Probably, I just kept riding. Uh, almost clipped another few deer. I got that on the GoPro, um, and that's when I started panicking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but no, I just kept looking at the stars. Like, all right, it's gonna, it's gonna guide me. I'm all right. You know, it's my light. <laughs> that must, like, that would have been such, so much more of an enjoyable ride. Like in like mid July, yeah. mid, you know, September. Mm -hmm. As far as like a nighttime motorcycle ride. I, it needs to be, I rode, I've ridden a motorcycle very little, but the few times I did, number one, terrified once I get over 70 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And number two, like it's seriously got to be over 80 for me yeah. not to get like just cold. Yeah. I get cold so easy. You get going down oh. the house. It's, oh, no thanks. Yeah, no, it was, I uh, lost, lost all, all uh, warmness in my fingers. Had to, had to put it on the motor with my glove just to, just to keep it warm. It was, it was, I couldn't break. I couldn't like hit the clutch. It was just, it was pretty. How, uh, how fast do you go? Uh, well, I was, I was hauling, uh, about 80 or 90 until I hit, what? until, until I hit, cause I was just trying to get there. I'm telling you, it was like pitch black. I was just, I was like, I got an hour about like, I remember it was like, I got like three hours to go and I was like, I got to get there. Yeah. Um, until I hit that deer is when I started going like 60 and that's when it just got, it took, it just, it just dragged. It was like, yeah, it was, I, it was like no end. Um, right. But originally, when I was on the highway, I was going like eighty or ninety, like no problem. Like I, I normally go about that, like our, our hundred on the motorcycle, like just, just a hundred. Yeah, dude, it's, you got to get a big heavy bike, man. Just shh, no problem, you know. <laughs> no problem. I mean, like, what if you hit like a pothole or something? Huh? Well, you, you, you practice. I, I, you know, you, you practice how to maneuver, or if you hit it, how to, how to prevent like falling. Normally, it'll just like jolt, but it's always just like push, push hard on the handlebars forward so you don't wobble out and, and lose control. I've ran over uh, tires where I've like gotten there and stuff like that, but it's just I don't know. It's just it's just really knowing how to handle the bike. You know, I went to, I went to motorcycle school, which helped me a lot with that. You know, dude, uh, terrifying. Yeah. You hit a spare tire or a, yeah, a flat tire, a flat tire on yeah. the highway going a hundred miles an hour. I was, I'm I was, dead. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was that that time that time. I'm, I, I'm just gonna let go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that time I was going about like 80. I was on the 101. Uh, heading home from work it's like pitch black too so but not pitch black but not compared to these streets but you know it was dark where i wasn't i didn't see it i just bounced over it and just like i, I lost a little control but like i said if you, if you know how to handle the, the handlebars you just easy easy roll away you ever been on a motorcycle donnie yeah dude you better wake up you had a long drive home yeah i know i'm gonna have to take some caffeine yeah uh you have been on a motorcycle mm -hmm. like going down the highway uh, not like a freeway, no, but like a lettered highway. Yeah. But, but I mean, highway enough, like it's asphalt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's How fast did you go? <laughs> not that fast. I don't know. I've only done it like three or four times. Like 60, 70? Maybe, I don't remember. One of them I was like probably, I don't know. It's been probably since I was 17, 18 years old since I did it. I was 17, first time I got, I think I told you, but I got, uh, <clears throat> my old yeah. man got a, a shovel head. Mm-hmm. Uh, and big bike, 1979 shovel head. So like, just, just like, I mean, like just shaking, da, 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 just, you know, like just started and, uh, picked it up in Amarillo. By the time it got gone, it was, uh, thank you, my friend. Oh my gosh. What is that? Why are you doing that? <laughs> Cause it was long. Dude, I'm about to punch you in the face. You do something like that again. What is wrong with you? It was long. I couldn't stand it. It was so much longer than the other one. Just ones. say something. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got lit up. Oh my gosh, that hurt, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, you wouldn't punch Don't me. Don't pull beards up, pull beard hairs out of my cheek. No, anyway, <laughs> that startled me, Donnie. That's the second. I, you almost made me do a. Uh, Tally mark on my curse words. <laughs> we got a curse uh, uh, swear jar. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your ears. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> but it was you didn't mean to jerk dude, a beard hair out of my face? It was like so much longer than all the other hairs where it was at. I had to take care of it for you. You could have just told me. We're halfway through the podcast. Most people aren't even listening anymore. Yeah. That's why I waited so long. <laughs> anyway, I don't even remember what I was talking about. Your, what was I talking about? Whatever. Bulls? No, oh, no. The you were shaking your down the highway. Harley, shovel head, going down the highway, pull out of Amarillo. It's at night. My old man had MS 
and could not take this cold. He didn't could he couldn't take the cold anyway. I don't even know why he blamed it on his MS. It was just the cold. But he was like, "You got to drive this thing." We were following him. Hmm. Me and my brother were following him in um, a truck that was equally as old with a camper that was twice as old on the back of it, single cab Ford with a uh, like a we had found this old camper for sale. Anyhow, so we look like some hillbillies. <laughs> anyway, I had never driven even a dirt bike. Mm-hmm. I had driven a four-wheeler. That was it. My brother, who was really handy with a dirt bike, like did jumps, everything. He was uh, he had a broken leg. He had broke a leg in Fort Worth on a bull. Anyhow, so his leg's in a cast. He's like, well, I can't drive it. So I got to drive it. And I get on this sucker. We got an hour to go on 287. And I've never driven a motorcycle before in my life. And we're in construction. It's two lanes. There's cones down the middle. 75 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour. There's semi-trucks coming. And I just got to learn how to drive this. So, and I got to go fast because if I go slow, the traffic stacks up behind me. Mm-hmm. 70 miles an hour. The very first thing I do is I'm just like headed towards the bar ditch. I don't even know how. I get like borderline to the grass going 70 miles an hour and I finally just like, all right, I'm just going to dive off in it. And I like went like this back <laughs> and got back on and I'm like, okay, now I can lean. Rolled all the way up, grew up in Memphis, rolled all the way up to Memphis and we had this drag, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm sure most small town. My cheek still hurts, Donnie. Like I can feel it. I feel like I'm bleeding. Am I bleeding? No. No. <laughs> Uh, old man flashes the lights, makes me pull over in, uh, did you think I was going to thank you? No, but. Did you think I was going to like high five you? No, I didn't, but I was saving you from embarrassment. Okay. Well, thank you for saving me from embarrassment. I'm going to go put some ice on my lip here in a minute. Anyways, old man flashes the lights, honks the horn, gets me to pull over on the edge of town. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, I'll take it from here. And I was shaking my head. All my buddies were downtown on the square. And this fool rides it in right in the middle of him like he was... Doing the right. Oh, my gosh. Like he had done took the whole the credit. thing. Yeah, it took all the credit. Yeah, took Like, I was so mad. So mad. But that's how I learned to drive a motorcycle. You think he did that on purpose? Yeah. I would I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just just have his son go through, the, go through all the hell. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It was so cold. It, was, it wasn't in November, mm-hmm. but it was like super cold for me. Yeah. I had put on... I'd put on a second pair of pants. I made one of them give me their pairs of pants. That was my first experience yeah. with a motorcycle. Then I had a Sportster in college for a little bit. I'd go to class on. Mm-hmm. Um, I never had a motorcycle license. <laughs> a lot of people don't. Yeah. I don't you don't know. need one. You don't need one to purchase one here. Takes it. Or no, anywhere? you're supposed to. I don't to. know. I don't know. Yeah, because you can't you can't purchase one without proof of license. Um. <clears throat> One time I drove one nine hours. That was. That's, that's a long. That ride. was tough, especially because I wasn't used to it. Yeah, that's a long. On the Sportster, dude, I couldn't feel my legs. What about your back? I could just imagine. And... It wasn't so bad no. on my back. I was like nineteen at the time, but like my le- like my butt fell asleep. Mm. My arms oh, yeah. fell asleep. Oh, yeah. I'll be the first to go. Dude, most most of my my buddies I ride that that's ridden to Texas from California. They're just like, yeah, take care of your butt, put a bunch of lotion on before you head out, like put some baby on some, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I guess I, you're used to it. Yeah, well, I bought a new seat just the, about two days before, so I I, I, I had the stock seat and I I'd driven a ridden a Monterey or San Luis Obispo where my brother lives. That's about like a three to five hour drive, yeah. uh, from California, just on the stock seat. And I mean, I had to stop every like 50 miles it just i couldn't do it my lower everything it was it was a bad terrible seat so i was like i i know i'm gonna need a, a real comfy seat with some sort of back support just because like you said your butt went out quick and your butt went numb you can't feel your legs you can't yeah the back yeah. deal so you got you got that deal on the um so you just put your bags yes sir on my my sissy bar yeah it's got sissy bar uh basically so, forgive me supports whatever you have if you have a passenger they can just chill on it you know, or but, for so bags. you got enough bags that it, you up against your sissy bar that you could just lean back. Yeah, exactly. So that that was kind of the go to. So like, put the my biggest bag so I can actually lean back and just just nice and just just chill where it's not you know bent over or I don't need a back brace to wear. You know, so it was pretty comfy. So just, you got to be so attentive on this bike. Do you feel like does it make like driving a car like a thousand times easier? Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah, I, that was like the f the first thought after after when I when I first arrived, I was like, I'm buying a truck here. I don't give I don't give it jack squat like <laughs> by, by december i'm gonna have a truck i'm gonna ask yeah. anybody selling a truck I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy it off you uh or any sort of vehicle because yeah I, I definitely can be convenient you know even even going to the grocery store it's well no what i'm saying is like so like you're used to like running over like a spare tire mm. at 85 miles an hour on a motorcycle yeah. where you could die yeah and oh, then you saying, go oh. to like four wheels yeah. with a windshield and a seat belt yeah <laughs> does that feel just like oh absolutely i mean absolutely i mean when you when you ride you got you got to have that mindset of everybody's out to kill you right you know so it definitely is more convenient and feels safer than than a motorcycle um i guess it would what i feel like is it would give me a constant state of perspective when i'm in a normal car mm. like i just feel like god's arms are wrapped around me like it's <laughs> guiding me down the highway <laughs> when i'm in a normal car compared to a motorcycle i, I just couldn't do oh, it you're absolutely, yeah you're absolutely I, right you got I, you got no seat belts you got nothing you you you, you said you clip something you it, it's over my imagination mm. was just like yeah you hit a deer in a car and it's just like yeah. oh that, dang. My, my heart was pounding so fast when i clipped that deer i got a contact insurance you hit a deer in a motorcycle and it's just like do I have my affairs in order? Yeah. yeah. Like, who's going to do my yeah. eulogy? Yeah. <laughs> it's two different conversations. Yeah, you're you know? absolutely right. Yeah. Oh, dang. I might need a new bumper. Like, I don't, like, am, are me and God on good terms? <laughs> we talk. <laughs> in a motor, you know, like, that's the difference. Yeah, that's yeah. why I stopped driving a motorcycle. Yeah. Well, personally. Mm hmm. No man, I I just find I find it so thrilling. You know, it, it's it's something that excites me, and you know, it's just it it rela in in a sense it relaxes me. It, it I mean here at night scary as heck, but in the morning it relaxes me. <laughs> I, I <laughs> do rides. I do get that. Yeah, yeah. I get that though. Like it, it it did feel like there'd be sometimes like when you pull out like for me it wasn't necessarily the highway, but like when I get off my little, I lived in town in college, and so like I pull out on just like a main you know. 50 mile an hour road mm -hmm. where I was like comfortable driving. Absolutely. You know, and uh, that speed was cool for me. And then, yeah. you know, I go about two or three, four miles to, to school. The, those, that was a cool feeling. Yeah, I, I definitely think here it, it's more relaxing, you know, instead of LA where it's constant lane splitting, constant yeah. traffic. Um, like I mentioned, yeah, lane splitting is when there's basically, you know, big lanes, four lanes, and you're just driving right between cars, you know. I'm anxious to see like, your comparison to bull riding. Do you want to get on more bulls? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I still want to get back on that same one that I did in last. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I definitely do. Uh, I, I thought it was fun, you know, as long as they're not too life-threatening <laughs> of a bull. You know, I definitely wouldn't yeah. mind doing it. It, it. it really is adrenaline rush and, and stuff like that. I, I really enjoy it. But it's doing. not something that you like. I wouldn't try making it a profession. Like Steer I, wrestling, that's what you said. Yes, sir. I, so I really want to see how far i can get in serious and if it, if the if it ever comes up i would love to do it and try it out uh, -huh. uh bull riding i wouldn't mind doing just for fun just for the heck of it it's, it just seems like just like a fun activity where you can have a good time with your friends and buddies and you know, get on some bulls and see, see who laughs tell him yeah you shouldn't do that no why oh no that's not how you word it <laughs> <laughs> what what should i what how should i word it that's um, just what i was told when i was i know i'm just trying like who told you uh-huh you're not gonna tell him? Tell me what? Uh, the four magic words. I don't know what you're talking about. Almost will get you hurt. Oh yeah, almost will get you hurt. Almost Sorry, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, that's my bad. I should have known that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, almost. Well, I guess, will I guess get that's true. Yeah. I don't know. I was just always told that. That's like, just a joke between us. Bull riding is it's too dangerous to. If, if you don't want to do it, you shouldn't do it at okay. all. Okay. It's just what I was told. That's, like, I'm not telling you you shouldn't get on a bull like like the Frostbite. bull you got on. Like, that that would be fine. Frostbite and Rickle. Yeah. Anything, anything, like, this is just, there's just stuff that can go wrong yeah. with it, you know. Even if it is a, a, a 5'11", yeah. you know. Like, yeah. he could step on you. It's, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. That's yeah. just what I was told. Yeah. There's a couple of bulls, yeah, and I'm just... No, I was about to say exactly yeah. what he just said. Yeah. He's right. Yeah, there's two or three style bulls that, if you want to get on all day long or as a joke, and then there's like this moment where it's like, okay, if I'm gonna get on New Mexico Bad Boy Five Eleven, um, even Prison Mike, you know, like those kind of bulls, it's just like I need to have it on my mind that, 
and, and getting on one or two <clears throat> of those style bulls to <laughs> find out yeah. is okay. But anyway, our last guy here was uh, uh, Nick, and he what did he call himself? Recreational, yeah, recreational bull yeah. rider, and then he broke both his arms. What, what, what does that he mean? Was recreational? Done. I don't know. Yeah, we ne- we didn't <laughs> we could, <laughs> never heard it. We could couldn't figure that out. <clears throat> but no, that's yeah. I think that's all the rough stock events. Yeah, bareback saddle bronc bull riding. I um, should I shouldn't have said you shouldn't do that because I don't feel bad, but no. like I'm just saying. Oh, like, I I think I I understand. Yeah, it, yeah. I, it's definitely something that if you want to do it, <clears throat> you you gotta understand what the consequences yeah. could be yeah like, the I, risks yeah i definitely understand that but like obviously like what, what, I, what i meant is what y'all said like don't i'm not gonna get on anything bigger than like rick or the or the one i got on you know like yeah that that's probably all i want to get on ever right like you know i, I just want to last the eight seconds <laughs> yeah. so I'll, I'll, be yeah. I'll be i'll be satisfied with life i can go in peace <laughs> and there's there's and and still most of the world large percentage of the world 99 percent, are not even going to get on those bulls yeah so like you're still but i mean i put you in a pretty playful even helmet you know like yeah. we understand the risks of course associated yeah, yeah, with yeah. those bulls and they're not as it's not as dangerous as, yeah it's definitely not as dangerous as going 100 miles an hour down the highway yeah. on a motorcycle yeah. so <laughs> that's why i felt comfortable putting <laughs> but, you on yeah. him but anyway Steer wrestling, though, which can also be a little dangerous. At yeah, times, there's a lot is, of like broken rib cages and stuff like that. Where right. It's pretty bruised, yeah. bruised up. Getting off of a horse going that fast. Yeah, that's the closest be. like timing event to a rough stock event. I feel like. Oh I yeah. I feel like it's Definitely. a pretty good so, blend of both. If I, if I can go 100 on a motorcycle, I just got to get used to. It. <laughs> Have you ever come off a, motor, a motorcycle going down the highway? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you'd laid one down or anything. No, no. Oh, that's good. So far, yeah. How long have you been driving one? Not that long either, about two years. Fairly new. Okay. First time I ever I ever did was a was a Kawasaki Ninja. Um, uh, ran into a wall. Just, just, Whoa! Yeah, it was. I feel like that's the first bike ever. It was yeah, it was a, yeah, it was like a it was like a, a six hundred. Um, it was a one Is of that my a one of my it? Yeah, uh, yeah, crotch rocket. Yes, it was one of my buddies and and it was like you know I, dr- I drive manual I've driven manual my whole life so I think what happened was the fact that it was e- it's easy to, to get the clutch and the throttle but I think mm-hmm. what happened is when I took off I panicked and as a, as a normal it's, panic yeah. you just you just clenched down clenched down and just went straight into the wall <laughs> um, um, I've never driven a crotch rocket you have yeah they're fast, how different man, you, are those than like a road like a it's like Harley a, or the Harley a sports are a little um, oh a big time different. When you when you're in a crotch rocket, all you want to do is go fast. You want to get padded up, and it's just it's just so easy. It's just so easy. Like you know, it's it's you're just blending with the wind. You know, when you're when you're in a a cruiser, you're you're upright. You got the wind blowing on you. You know, it's more laid back. It's louder. You know. Um, so you've driven a crotch rocket yeah. a little bit too. Yeah. Did uh, how fast have you gone on those? No, not fast at all. No, because I never have. I'm never padded up. Like gotcha. I won't, yeah, no. I've, I've driven my buddies, like, but no way in heck. Uh, they they those fast. scare me. Those scare me. They'll go yeah. like Th- those, 180. Those scare me, yeah. Gosh dang. Oh, they, go, they go faster than that. Yeah, I, I've they, had a buddy that's gone like 220 on, on one. 220? Yeah. Like, yeah. you're not even on the ground. No, you're just. Dude, you're like, he's you're dead. like thunder, dude. He's dead. Yeah. Like a rabbit yeah. gets out in yeah. front of him. That joker's gone. Yeah. <laughs> you hit a snake. You hit Anything. a rattlesnake or a black yeah. snake. <laughs> Yeah, so that's why those those are those are risky. And then most most deaths and accidents are because of those, you know, because you're you're just too fast and and you you're almost like even even on a motorcycle. There's times where they're in my blind spot when I'm riding. And these these guys just just pass me up like you you can't even see them sometimes, you know. So you got to you got to be so aware. I mean, they're they're easy to maneuver, but this still still doesn't still it's the ten times worse. Okay, I guess so. That's where I'm at. Like kind of what he was talking about with the bull riding. Like I've I've done that enough times to like see the risk versus the reward Mm -hmm. i'm out the rewards weren't big enough (laughs) i enjoy the feeling of like going 45 but like the the risks didn't the the rewards didn't outweigh the risks yeah yeah, 100 percent. yeah yeah anyway plus i I had i've had a family member die on a on a motorcycle yeah i think two of them actually anyhow and so, like, just growing up, yeah. I always heard about it. Yeah. I, I remember the, the first time I got my license, it was like a – it was my, my folks were, like, coming down the highway, and then they, they they saw, like, this crash or whatnot. And then right away they called me, like, are you all right? Like, what the heck? Like, because it's just motorcycles, you know. And then after that, it was just, like, a lot of family calling me every time they saw a motorcycle accident. It's like, hey, right. you know. Yeah. Uh, the first time when I did it, um, you, you saw how loud my bike was. I uh, I got into an accident, 
and it was because the driver didn't hear me he didn't see me so what i did is i just straight piped it and like i said that's that's it's always like they say when you when you have a bike, you either want to add a lot of lights, like a hundred lights, where it's extremely blinding, or make it extremely loud. You know, so I just yeah. I add a new light and made it extremely loud, and that's obviously changed like the way I ride and and just the way people can see and hear me. You know, yeah. Down the huh. hallway. You haven't ridden it since you got here. I on Sunday I did. Oh, you did? Yeah, I had to go to okay. Walmart, so I, I put one of my bags and just went to Walmart. And Were you cold? Oh, it's freezing. I, I stopped. I stopped at a show, and then there was this uh, this gentleman. He was just like, "Bad day for riding," huh? and I was just like, "Yes," because I was just like trying to put my cart into the chip. <laughs> he just let me shaking. I don't want to talk about <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just real funny. He's like, "Yeah, bad day for riding." I was like, "Yeah, I know." Well, that Sunday was. I need to call Dodge House, get yeah. my truck back, since you know how to drive a stick. Yeah. So I was going to ask you if you know anybody's trying to sell sell a truck. Well, I'm not trying to sell it. No, but if, you can if drive you, it. If you know anybody. Yeah. No, I don't know no. anybody. <laughs> That's trying to sell it. <clears throat> yeah. Any of you folks out there know, but <laughs> hit me up. We can find one, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Cheech brought, bought Leroy's truck. He might be trying to sell. Okay. I, I, I mean, he acted like he kind of wanted it, and he may change his mind. So, anyway, it was an affordable, good buy, Absolutely. good purchase. And so, maybe that one. That one's been passed around. So. Well, what kind of truck is it? It's a Ford uh, King Ranch edition. Ooh. Uh, it's like the same. 06, isn't it's it? It's like it almost exactly like my truck, except it's got a flatbed on it. Yeah. Mm. It's a ranchy looking ride. Okay. Yeah. But <clears throat> I don't know anything about trucks. Mm. And I don't try to. It's an 0660. Yeah, is it's it an 0660. O- is it a one ton or a <laughs> three quarter? Yeah. It's like, then it's like exactly like my truck, except yeah. it's a King Ranch, not a Lariat. Yeah. So, anyhow, potentially, we potentially may have. In the future, so, maybe. But there should be a lot of them around here. Yeah. I've, yeah. Been, I've been thinking about trying to find another one just because there's not, nobody coming through has been able to drive a standard. Mm-hmm. And that's what yeah. the work truck we yeah. have. Donnie can, but Donnie's not an intern anymore. No. Donnie doesn't. I didn't really know how to. I knew a little bit how to when I got here, but. I hadn't driven one as much, I guess I should say. Yeah. I could do it, but I hadn't driven one as much. But that truck's easy to drive. So what are you wanting to push the gas on as far as learning? Anything and everything. I want to know the traits. I know like uh, the rules per se that you told me yesterday, that was, that was a, a, mind, a mind opener. And I, I actually enjoyed that a lot. And I want to know more about that, that kind of culture too that you said about you know what it takes to be a rancher and a cowboy and 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 knowing and it's i don't know if it's considered seniority but just knowing the basic like respect factors you know um that was also a really really nice nice to know yeah. you know um and honestly like anything that's to be to be a better feeder to be a better you know like like i said horse pooper scooper whatever it takes to be a better folder i mean yeah. i, I want to know it all you know what i mean so the rules he's talking about we were talking uh we went and we were looking for a bull me donnie gabriel and joe and we um, we were just kind of going over some of the little things like don't ride in front of somebody, don't ride into, you know, respect somebody else riding their own country, don't take off when somebody's shutting a gate, little things like that. Um, don't make fun of somebody's horse, hat, mm-hmm. dog, wife, gear, <laughs> Who truck. Somebody, somebody's wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what you the? never know. <laughs> you never My know. Lord. Um, anyway, uh, just some of those little rules but as far as being a cowboy like i think you know there's so many people that have things to learn Mm -hmm. you know and so when you find yourself coming onto a ranch or going anywhere so long as you i'm trying to think it doesn't matter what you're doing whether you're working out playing football ranching bartender if you don't know as much as the next guy and or or at least like a lot less than the next guy mm. then <clears throat> you need to kind of act like it yeah i don't mean like be hard on yourself yeah. but there needs to be a certain humility level that comes with that and what most people's problem is is they'll if all the knowledge cowboy is 100 they'll get to level 15 mm. and all of a sudden act like they're at 92 yeah and what happens there is number one, nobody wants to help you because they don't 
they don't like you know it's just not attractive yeah. but number two your brain shuts off and you you miss out because you th- you literally think you know mm-hmm. <clears throat> so i think just trying to constantly be aware of where you're at you know and and you might be at a 43 well don't treat yourself like you're an eight mm-hmm. you know what i mean like, like you need to kind of have that confidence and, and move forward with it. Absolutely. But there needs to remain a humility level because there's plenty of guys that are at a 94, 5, 6, like myself, that <laughs> act like. You're not on 100? That are at. <laughs> well, no, this is the part that's myself. I act like I'm at, you know, 40 mm-hmm. or 50. So, um, no, I'm, I'm at 107, Donnie. But. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, that's the thing. It's like most of the people that act like they're at a 93 mm. aren't. Yeah. You know. So I'm trying to think of another industry to compare it to. Lineman. Lineman. <laughs> <laughs> Welders. <laughs> Welders. Yeah. So anyhow, that that's that's what I would suggest no matter where you're at as far as like if you'll just be humble about if you if you stay in a constant state of knowing like where you're at in your ability, mm-hmm. that way you you know where you want to get and you know where you're at, then it just saves you a lot of time, yes, sir. and it's a lot less stress like getting knocked down a peg because that's what whether you're roping something or getting on in the arena or training a horse, they're gonna show you where you're at, mm-hmm. you know, and it's humbling if you think you're at a 78 and all of a sudden they knock you down to a 52 yeah you know i think i think the where you start is just learning how to ride i think that's a that's a pretty big building block in this industry Mm. yeah being able to sit a horse comfortably yeah yeah using your lower body to communicate um not too much you know be Mm light-handed get off their head and use your legs and then just getting comfortable being able to travel. Yeah. Yes, sir. yeah. Especially out here. When you go to shorter country, mm-hmm. like east of I thirty five, you know, you might be tra- you might be gathering a two hundred acre pasture. Yeah. But out here, that's that's a trap. Mm-hmm. That's not a pasture, that's a trap. So you gotta be comfortable drive you know, traveling bigger country Absolutely. out here. Anyway. So he's right. <laughs> Because you even before you learn how to use a rope, you got to know where to put your horse. Yeah, you know. Yes, sir. It's great if you can rope the dummy, but if you can't ride your horse to the real life cow, then it's not going to matter how good you can rope. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. But <clears throat> so, what we're talking about is all the technical stuff of like how to handle horses and cows. Absolutely. And then there's another side, like the the financial side of like managing them mm-hmm. and making like everyday financial decisions where you can be profitable Absolutely. and not go backwards, mm-hmm. which is a whole nother skill set. Then there's the nutrition and the, the health side where, you know, you got to be able to actually keep them alive. Yeah, take care of them. Yeah, I experienced that with the, the horse the other day with the upset stomach. Yeah, when he colicked. Mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, because... It's great if you know how they act, and it's great if you can make money with them. Yeah. But they got to be alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah they got to be. <laughs> if they all die, yeah. then. So that's why we say rule number one is make sure everything has water. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Then rule number two is keep everything clean. Mm-hmm. Rule number three is feed. Four, five, six, I can't remember, and number seven is safety. Safety, safety last. first. Safety last. Rule number seven. Safety first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> what what number intern is he? Seven. Eight. Number eight. I you believe. are intern number eight. Yep. I made Dean. it. I made it, mom. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's only two still here. Yeah. So, right now we're at um, 25%. 75% of interns got to be on to the next one. Yes, sir. So, one out, every, one out of four interns makes it 
Three out of four fail. Been here a long time now. Donnie's the longest standing intern. But Donnie's like water. (laughs) Gotta be like water. (laughs) Ready to do anything. Which is what you said in your video. Yes, sir. And I believed you. That's why you're here. Yes, sir. So I am. Well, you got anything else for the citizens of Winnebago you want to share? Uh, no, sir. No, not that I know. Donnie's going to get on the road. Pow, pow. You guys, don't forget to check out... Uh, life di- advice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your life advice? Nothing is ever given. Everything is earned. Man. I know. You know, it's like 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 this, you know. I, I, knew, like I, I, I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I like it. What do you got, Donnie? <clears throat> uh, good judgment comes from experience. Experience comes from bad judgment. Oh. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I've said that one before, but. Do the right thing for the right reasons and live with the consequences. Mm-hmm. That's a w- tough one. I was waiting to use that office reference for a while. You were what? Waiting to use that office reference. The, Which one? The one I just said, the, Mike, the Michael Scott. Uh, I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. <laughs> Which episode is that? I don't remember. I don't remember, I don't remember that either. <laughs> no, that's what you got. I don't know. I like you even more now. <laughs> it's quite not. Oh, wait. That's, it was, uh, Have you yet seen The Lonesome Dove? No, sir. <sighs> <sighs> I'm waiting for the movie night. Time to eat fire. I'm gonna give you two more days. We got. Is it on any streaming platform? Yeah, it's, it's on, on Amazon. Amazon. You oh, dude. If you're subscribed to Stars, I think you can watch yeah, it. Stars, yeah. Okay. Um, don't forget to check out DaleBrisby.com if you listen to this before midnight on Cyber Monday because we got 20% off. And if you text me 940-353-0890, I will um, text you an additional. Um, code to use for an additional offer and every hundred dollars spent during this black friday sale will get entered in a drawing to win my dirt bike which you get to come to radiator ranch and pick up and um meet the crew ride boone pick up the dirt bike if for some reason it doesn't run i'll give you the cash value and the dirt bike if the calves don't smash it before then yeah, right now That's we right. got it in a pen full of yearlings. That was the last place we used it. <laughs> Spark there. Yeah, the last giveaway I did was the uh, of a rodeo van, mm, and yeah, we yeah. I had to take it to southwest of L.A. Anyhow, I put it on a trailer, drove 20 hours, slept in a podunk hotel for about five hours, and drove 20 hours back. Nice. It was a long two yeah. days. Long two days. My clutch went out in mm. my truck coming back. Yeah, Is that why it's in the shower now? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. The wiring harness, oh, okay. which I don't think should take three and a half weeks, but that's how long it's been in the shop. It's a lot of wire. It's a lot of wire, depending on how tangled it is. In. Yeah, but at this three and a half weeks, that's, I just should get a long. whole yeah. new wiring <laughs> yeah. harness. You know, like yeah. just give yeah. me a new one if you're going to yeah. put Take me out that long. Yeah. Anyways, whatever. Um, on to the next one, whole son. Pow, pow. Do you want to help me talk about the sale? It's a great sale. Out yeah. here in the on the oh, oh yeah sure the warehouse floor. <clears throat> they get to hear from me all the time. You're yeah. the one always behind the camera. Yeah yeah. What are you doing in here? I was answering some DMs on Rodeo Time just now. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's warm out here. Do you use that to uh, talk to chicks? Not hardly. No. Chicks don't holler at you? Yeah, they holler on my account, not Rodeo Times. I think they think it's you on Rodeo Time, that's why they don't holler. That's why I figured you'd have a better chance. No, no. What do you want to know? What's going on? 20% off, store-wide, I think, except American hats, yeah. 30% off the Christmas sweater. Every uh, purchase over $100 gets entry fee. That's the important one, I forgot that. I'm glad I brought you out here. I was about to make this video dirt bike. saying that. Dirt bike, it's an entry fee to a dirt bike drawing. Entered in a drawing to win a dirt bike. If there's still a dirt bike left to give, the old man. Yeah, it's hard on. It. He's hard on stuff. You What's know? your favorite shirt? Probably the off-rodeo time right now. Off-road? Yeah, off-rodeo time. 
play on words. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Is that yeah. what it's called online? Yeah. I didn't I didn't know that. Why don't well, you tell me these things? Yeah. You're not in charge of Mark. Well, I can't. This is. We name things, not you. <laughs> it's What's your one. favorite hoodie? Uh. Yeah, you better put that back. Probably saved by Rodeo Time hoodie. I like this one. Oops. Don't worry. We'll wash them. <laughs> yeah. That's I like that one. shirt too, though. Yeah, that's what I was thinking was your favorite shirt. Yeah, I like that shirt. So but I knew we had a hoodie. I have this hoodie too, so. <laughs> and we're back. Now we're going to look at hats. Dude, you can't go wrong with this light denim. This is pretty slick stuff right here. I don't wear it because I'm more of an all black guy, but. I can't really knock that hat. This is my favorite. They should call it a Donnie Daytona Classic, but it's not actually on the shelf right now. Kind of. But you can get it online. <laughs> you can get it online. It's not on the shelf, but you can get it online. Well, they're coming today. Yeah. So by the time they yeah, see yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. they will be on the yeah. shelf. This is the f the best looking hat I've never worn. This, hold on. Hold, this, it, hold it still. This is a good one. <laughs> I can't wait to... The... Yeah. That's probably the one I wear the most, isn't it? Now, yeah. This is a good hat. It's like formal, but informal. It's not like... Can you hold it still? For one second. This Got is 20% off? It's always rodeo time. Yeah, it says that. I just don't think you can go wrong with black. You know? You're giving these away for 20% off too? Oh my gosh, I am. Dude, these people are getting a deal of the century. Which one of these is your favorite? I like the khaki, but... I probably gotta go with the paisley. Yeah, it's a toss up for me. Look, and they got like leather on them. Like, that's you, genuine leather. You ain't having a blowout at the bottom of this backpack. No, like, you're you, not. <laughs> you, you load it down with whatever, you know, that's be it school, school supplies or extracurricular activity supplies. I don't know, whatever you wanna put in there. Uh, we're also doing coffee mugs 20% off. Were you. Is that a question? Yeah, a question oh, mark. I couldn't tell if you were asking. <laughs> yeah. Someone put a question mark on the teleprompter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're giving these away for 20% off. Coffee Which one's not, your favorite? Coffee, coffee not included. Um, What's your favorite belt buckle? Well, I ride Bronx, so. Probably the Winnebago. Wrote, wrote the, the old son. I don't even know what it's called, but it's got a Bronx on it. 1987. How old were you in 87, like 30? You'd like to be talking that ish, don't you? What? Now I'm gonna show them your- uh... We got posters. Oh, we got posters. Come on. Oh, here's my favorite. Show me your favorite poster. Just like, just like this part though. Oh yeah. Yeah. I... Yeah. Are you signing them? Yeah, I have been. Yeah. If people ask me to. Yeah. I don't just like sign them, but I will. This one's kind of. I don't cool. like that one as much because you can't see my face. Yeah, I think I, that's why I like oh, it. Oh, it is. That's yeah. why you like it. Yeah. Last but not least. We got coloring books. Coloring books. You shouldn't say last but not least. We're just remembering all these things up the yeah. top of our head. Uh, I'm not featured in the coloring books. So I'm not a big fan, but. <laughs> but you do color in it at yeah. night? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Something bit me. There is a design your own t-shirt page, brand your horse, come come up with a brand. Ooh, there's a maze. You ain't no kibble. If you don't like coloring, you ain't no cowboy. Well, Dal, yeah. I think that's it. Now we'll cover up the lens with your hand to end up this part. <laughs> in the face. If you're interested in a special offer, text me 940-353-0890. And I will personally text you with an additional, you're already getting 20% off. Again, every $100 entered in a drawing to win my dirt bike. You've got a week left. It ends midnight at Cyber Monday. Gail thinks he's giving my dirt bike away. Old Harry Neck over here is about to kill himself on this dirt bike. We got to give it away. Pronto, which means Black Friday, 
November 16th, Monday through Cyber Monday, November 30th. Every $100 order gets entered in a drawing to win this dirt bike. You get to come to Radiator Ranch to pick it up. You're gonna meet the crew, ride Boone, pick up the dirt bike. You'll be in a Rodeo Time episode. A and it's 20% off, so you're already getting 20% off, and you're entered to uh, win a dirt bike and hang out with Dale Brisney. Are you ready for the grand finale? Yes! Yes, we're ready! Preparation H up in here. <laughs>